The easiest way to make an audio amplifier is to use an integrated circuit. The chip contains most of the amplifier circuitry. You just add whatever additional components are necessary following the datasheet and you've got a working audio amp. And if you look at the specs for any power amplifier chip, you will find a power rating. The higher the number, the louder the party. However, this power rating can be misleading. It is not as bad as that PMPO nonsense, but it's still a power figure you may never achieve. This amplifier that I've made aims to solve one of the issues limiting the power output of small amps. It is specifically designed for battery operation, so it's great for portable wireless speakers. Before I tell you more about it, let's look at one of the most popular simple amplifier chips and its limitations. This module is based on the PAM8403. It is a stereo amplifier chip promising up to 3 watts per channel into 4 ohm speakers. With these specs and a price of around $1, it is no surprise that these modules are so popular for DIY projects. But here is the catch. You need a 5 volt supply to get anywhere near that power output. If you are powering the amplifier from a single battery, your voltage will be closer to 3.7 volts. In this case, you'll be getting only around 1.5 watts per channel. This applies to other amplifiers as well. The voltage essentially puts a limit to how much power you can get without using a speaker with less impedance. My amplifier uses a different chip, the HT8691R. Its key advantage is that it has a built-in voltage booster. This allows it to provide significantly more power while still using a single battery. We are about to test how well it works, but first let me tell you where I got these lovely PCBs from. They were made by my sponsor JLC PCB. And if you need a custom circuit board for your own projects, look no further than JLC PCB. Their services are affordable, reliable and easy to use, which is why they have millions of customers from around the world, myself included. After I designed my circuit and PCB in Easy EDA, I simply uploaded my files to jlcpcb.com. They took care of the rest, including testing and manufacturing. The PCB was done in 24 hours, and one week later, I had my finished amplifier modules in the mail. You can order your own custom circuit boards for as low as $2 for 5 pieces, or have entire modules professionally manufactured with over 400,000 parts in stock. For more complex designs, JLC PCB has a special discount on 6-layer PCBs. And if you sign up with my link below, you can get free coupons for your first order. Now back to the project. Compared to cheap modules that I mentioned earlier, my amplifier is much bigger. But there is a lot more going on. First of all, I've included proper terminals for the battery input and the audio output, as well as an input audio jack. There are two amplifier chips, one for each channel, and for each chip I have two large Panasonic capacitors. On the input we have film capacitors for better sound quality. The inductors and the diodes are part of the voltage boosting circuit, while these potentiometers allow me to set the voltage level. These pin headers are for setting the operational mode of the amplifier. It can work in class D or class AB. There is also an optional distortion preventing feature, which we will test later in the video. I have to make a side note because I think this part is interesting. The mode is determined by the voltage applied to a dedicated pin on the chip. So where do you get this voltage from? Normally you would use a simple voltage divider, but here this wouldn't work. The voltage of the battery goes up and down, depending on its charge level, and so the output of the voltage divider would fluctuate as well. One solution is to include a Zener diode in reverse bias and a small resistor. This creates a more stable voltage. I picked a 2.7 volt diode in combination with several voltage dividers to get the voltages I needed. However, I made a mistake when picking the resistor value. I'm getting just 2.2 volts across the diode when I need 2.7. So I replaced the resistor with a smaller value. Perhaps I should stop using parts this tiny when prototyping but at least I had my microscope to help with this job. I went through several different resistors. A value of 300 ohms worked the best for my circuit. Now let's see how much power I can get out of this chip. As a reminder, this amp works in one of three modes. Class AB, 
class D and class D with clipping prevention. Let's start with class AB. I have my power supply set to 3.7 volts to simulate a battery and I'm using a 4 ohm speaker as a load. The good news is that we have sound, the amplifier works. The bad news is that I hear distortion when I turn the volume up. I measured the power output and I was getting 1 watt of power before clipping. In class AB the voltage boosting feature is not available. We cannot use the clipping prevention either. To get more clean power I have to increase the supply voltage. These are the results I got after more testing at different voltages and load resistances. Then I switched to class D operation. Now the voltage booster is active, so even though I have just 3.7 volts on the input, the amplifier gets more, between 4.5 and 7.5 volts. Right away I can hear that the sound is both louder and clearer. I wanna see that signal on the scope, but I cannot probe the amplifier output directly. Since we are in class D operation, I first have to run the signal through a low pass filter. With a 4 ohm load I am getting 4 watts of clean power which is pretty good and when I increase the input to 5 volts I get around 4.5 watts. But I see that the amplifier struggles more with a 2 ohm load. I only got around 3.6 watts at 3.7 volts and 4.8 watts with a 5 volt input before distortion. Speaking of distortion let's see if the clipping prevention feature is any good. It is currently disabled and the volume is set to maximum. The amplifier is clipping heavily so we get lots of distortion. But as soon as I move the jumper to enable the feature the clipping disappears. We are getting less power of course but it's about as much as I measured previously. It looks like the distortion limit kicks in as soon as I turn up the volume enough to reach clipping and it prevents me from going further. Cool stuff. And if you think that 4 watts of power is not that big of a deal, let me remind you there is 3 times more compared to what you'd get with one of these. So you might be wondering why this approach isn't more popular. Well I think there are several reasons. One of them is that the increase in power comes at the cost of efficiency. The boost converter cannot be 100% efficient. I measured the efficiency of the entire system to be around 60% which is pretty bad for a class D amp. In addition, the voltage booster consumes energy even when the amplifier is idle. The higher the voltage boost, the more current it pulls. Another downside is that you need a high quality battery that can supply lots of current. The amplifier can easily pull several amps per channel if you try to test its limits. On top of that, the boost converter adds complexity and requires the PCB to be laid out correctly to avoid noise. But despite all this, I think this amplifier has potential. If you set it up properly without pushing it too much and give it a decent battery, it can serve as the base of a very capable portable speaker with plenty of powerful sound in a small package. Let me know if you want me to make one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.